Um, good morning, um, everybody. Uh, my name's Angela Wunsch, and I'm from True Relationships and Reproductive Health. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the Yagara people as the traditional owners and the lands in which we're standing this morning and acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about our organisation first of all. Um, as I said, our name is True Relationships and Reproductive Health, or True for short. Um, for many, many years we've been known as Family Planning Queensland prior um, to 2015 when we changed our name. So although that's coming up to two years now, we're still in a bit of a process of communicating um, our name change. So we've been around since the early 70s um, and we're a sexual and reproductive health service based in Queensland. Um, so my role at True is Manager of Child and Family Education Services and this morning I'm going to tell you a little bit about our Shared Understandings, Relationships and Sexuality project um, which we did last year, um, the, the first, first half of 2016. Um, so where's my notes? Um, in 2015, uh, the Complex Case Advice and Practice Support uh, Leadership Unit within the Queensland Department of Communities, Child Safety and Disability Services, um, they delivered a practice development program to a group of their own senior practitioners um, within child safety and also with some practitioners from the um, Northern Territory Government as well. Um, and following the completion of that program, uh, the um, CAPS team funded our organisation to deliver a, the Shared Understandings Project, which was a parallel um, program um, delivered to foster and kinship care service providers across Queensland. Um, so Shared Understandings was developed as a strengths and solutions focused training and mentoring project to increase the confidence and competence of professionals to support foster and kinship carers communicate about relationships and sexuality and respond to the sexual health and behaviour needs of the children and young people in their care. Um, so shared understandings um, aligned with the expected Royal Commission recommendation strategies um, by providing training to foster and kinship care case managers on child sexual abuse prevention, education, sexuality, sexual development, responding to sexual behaviours and supporting sexual health and sexual health literacy for children and young people. Um, so there's a little bit of information up there um, about the project. So we, um, following consultation with the department, we designed the project to work with four foster and kinship care service providers across Queensland. Um, and we had 20 key champions. And I guess these were the people considered within their organisation as the go-getters, um, the people who are really willing and able to communicate about relationships and sexuality. Um, some of those people were doing that fantastically within their organisations already. Um, so we had 20 professionals across the state um, and they were based um, all around Queensland. So our idea was about developing local communities of practice um, for people within their own organisation and locally um, across Queensland as well. Um, so we had a series of webinar um, uh, training and mentoring sessions. So the project was delivered over a three month period um, and we had five webinar, two hour sessions with each of those professionals and they were interactive facilitated conversations um, to continue that mentoring support. Um, each of those professionals had reading and reflective activities to go away and partic participate in um, within their organisation and also with their local um, communities of practice within, the within their, um, their groups of well. Um, so you can see a little bit of information up there about the key findings of the project. Um, so we're really excited about some of those. So I'll quickly run through those. So um, following the, um, the post-project evaluation, we found that 100% of the participants um, um, felt confident and competent in supporting carers to address sexuality and relationships and sexual behaviour with the children and young people in care. Um, and really acknowledging that fostering kinship carers, they're perfectly placed um, to support the children in their care, access age-appropriate education and information, and also forming a key part of that child or young person safety network. Um, we had an increase in confidence from 50% in the pre-evaluation to approximately 90% um, at the end of the project in confidence and competence to engage carers in conversations around relationships and sexuality. Some of the key um, bits of information that we had from that is that, uh, thank you, um, that engaging carers in conversations around values and attitudes and healthy sexual development and not making assumptions that that information is, is coming elsewhere. One of the things that we hear within our organisation that it's always somebody else is doing it, no one's taking um, control of that information. So that was something that was really um, useful that, that uh, we found at the end of the project. 100% um, confidence 
and competence in understanding healthy sexual development and children and young people, um, and from an increase of 40% pre-project. Um, that's crucial. In order for us to obviously identify sexual behaviours which are concerning or harmful, it's really important that we all have that understanding of healthy sexual development. Um, and again, not, not um, making assumptions as to where that information is coming from. One of the things that we did as part of the project is looking at sexual development um, for children and young people with abuse and trauma histories and how those developmental traje trajectories and can be shifted based on their experiences. Um, identifying, understanding and responding to sexual behaviours um, and we base that using um, TRUE's Traffic Lights Framework um, and with there's information on our website that you can access more about that. Um, at the end we also found about 90% confident competence in supporting carers to, to address those conversations with children and young people and to be the people who initiate those conversations, again not making those assumptions that somebody else in the life of that child or young person is doing that. Um, and again, about 90% confident or competent to assist carers, support, uh, access appropriate resources. One of the bits of information that we were really surprised to hear at the beginning of the project was um, we know there are resources out there, but we need how do we support carers to access those, those resources which are appropriate to the children and young people um, in their care. Um, so thank you. Um, I won't spend any, much, uh, any longer talking about the project, but come and have a chat to me during the break um, if you want to know more. Thank you.